Hey folks, you see the thumbnail, you see the title. In this video, we're going to look at how three musicians approach the same song, the unique chords they use, and some suggestions on what you can do to achieve this type of sound. Unlike the thumbnail suggests, this is not a competition between the musicians, but rather, I couldn't pass up the opportunity for three musicians who are masters at their craft covering the exact same song in the exact same key with only stylistic differences between all of them. In fact, I would love to hear your thoughts and suggestions about these musicians in the comments. So let's start this video playing each person's version of The Promise by Andre Crouch in D flat. Eddie. <laughs> Okay, so right out the gate, we see him impose a strong melody on the song by his use of octaves. Using octaves, not in the bass note, like I mentioned in my video about avoiding octaves in the left hand, but using octaves in the melody is an intentional strategy designed to highlight the melody. And it works very well in this case to lead up to this D flat chord over A, Mr. Bond. Okay, so now he's showing out. He subverts our expectations at the very beginning of the song by starting on a three, then a one sus chord. But then to provide some color on that F sharp chord, he uses a 13th and the sharp 11 as tension notes. Keep going, Mr. Bond. I wanna hear that last chord on the U again. So on the word U, we see the preference for the A flat six nine chord where A actually plays a D flat over A flat at that spot. Jason. All right, all right, Jason, we get it, bro. As usual, Jason is bringing it with his incredible feel. But first, one thing that will change his playing relative to the others is that he's playing the piano rather than an electric piano like the other two. And secondly, he's playing with a track. So he doesn't necessarily have to use his instrument to carry the whole song, but rather he can more or less color around it. And I know a lot of you love Jason's approach, but you have to remember the context determines how each musician would play this song, including the instrument they're playing, EP version versus piano, change the instrument, change the context, all of these guys would sound different. We're examining this as they've recorded in this specific instance, that sound right here. See, again, he doesn't have to chord it as much and he can color it since both the chord and the melody is assumed by the track. Also, notice on the Forsake You, he plays a similar chord to Mr. Bond. So Mr. Bond plays this, and Jason plays this. So Bond's chord, but then Jason's chord. And as you can see, both of these are six, nine chords. They're just voiced differently and they have different notes on top. I'm going to let Jason start the next section on no matter what you're going through. No matter what you're going through. Man, <laughs> no matter what, I just love the melodic bass simplicity. Looks like Jason opts for chromatic movement here, which he is using in this context to tie two chords together. This chord. And this chord. So the lick sounds like this. Mr. Bond. Uh, 
<laughs> the richness of these tones and how he phrases them are so interesting. You know, anytime a musician plays that section of the song, the I have good news for you section, my ears perk up. And of course, Mr. Bond doesn't disappoint here. His chord choices here are... I mean, but you gotta see his chord choices after that because he, oh, wait, what was that? Oh, you, yeah, you wanna hear 80s chords on that same section, okay. So slightly different chord voicings here. So Eddie's chords for this section are E sus, D augmented, E major, And let me just say this too, it's so refreshing to see all of these masters have a different way of approaching the same line. I'll be with you always. Let's continue with you, Eddie. Okay, okay, Eddie, I know you're about to go ham. <laughs> and notice how he wraps the section up in the same way he started, using the octaves. Uh, such symmetry in his playing is masterful. And listen, check Eddie's original song here. I covered this song in a much longer video before in, uh, I think, 2017. So check out that video, and you can hear my whole thoughts on Eddie's portion. And let me know what you think of Eddie's part in the comments. Uh, but let's go to Tyson on this section. <laughs> It's like y'all know I'm about to do a video, so you're like, you know what, let me just go ham for you, Sean, just a little bit. <laughs> but again, notice Jason's playing is so melodic, it almost feels like he's painting, but musically, if that makes any sense. Uh, and if you understand that, smash the like button for those of you who got it, but let's go on. Mr. Bond, can you continue? <laughs> So basically, this dude went straight crazy on the chords for I'll Be With You Always. And in fact, where Jason takes a melodic approach, Kevin Bond decides to take a more harmonic approach to this section. But it's his choice of chords that are really insane. And his expert use of how he weaves in the sharp nine, the dominant sharp nine, sharp five chords within the line is so unique. And in a movement which could only be inspired by the spirit of Eddie, he circles back to how he started, which is replacing the one chord with the three. See, folks, listen, there's nothing wrong with having an opinion about which musicians you like, which approach you like. And I love to hear your opinions in the comments about this. But one of the things that I get to do on this channel is appreciate how musicians think. And at the end of the day, that is what we are all wanting, multiple ways of playing the same song. So if you want Kevin Bond's approach, you need to get good at chord substitutions. Uh, he also uses a lot of five one bass progressions, and he's using a lot of rich chord substitutions to support the melody, which is evidenced by his approach in that last chord progression we just heard with respect to the melody. Learning this approach is going to teach you to play proper context. It's going to give your playing grace and advanced chord structures. Now, if you're wanting to learn excellent examples of chord placement, uh, then I invite you to study Eddie Brown's version. It's an excellent example of using chords in a proper context. He seems to have a good grasp of even his out there chords that combined with his amazing feel will have you playing any song with poise and balance finally learn jason tyson's approach if you want to have subtle movements that are outside the chord structure but keep the chords themselves relatively simple and allow the melodic riffs to provide the color learning and adapting jason's style to your own songs is going to give your playing a sense of maturity and feel i will have the notes to all three of these songs on my website for you to study for those of you who are members of my website, you will be able to adopt 
these sounds to your own playing. In addition, I invite you to listen to all these songs in full. I'll place the links to the entire songs in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching. Please like the video if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And as usual, thanks again for watching. And until next week, we'll see you later.